I started with a 2011 F350 axle. I really didn't care about the ratio or what it came out of. I just wanted the e-locker and I wanted to have the possibility to use the factory pass-through. If I could, I ended up not being able to, but I disassembled the axle popped everything apart, made sure that the carrier was good, that the races hadn't spun on it, the locker actuated, and I didn't see any signs of damage. After that, I cleaned it up and got it ready for the reassembly. Here are my buddies checking the backlash as we're taking the original open carrier out of this axle. When I drained the diff fluid, I was really surprised to find a whole lot of silver in it, indicating that I likely had a bearing coming apart, and a lot of rust in it, which also blew me away, because I had only put these axles in, and I thought cleaned them out well two years before. Got the sterling ten and a quarter all cleaned out. I popped the factory carrier out, ring and pinion, all that. Pulled the axle shafts and then took some brake clean, started cleaning the housing. And then I used a ramrod down the axle shafts with some rags on the end to push out any dirt and debris. And then I used a bristle type chimney cleaner to clean out the rest of the gunk. Cleaned it all down. Axle housing is ready to start assembling so that I can find where I need to drill my hole for my locker plug, which will likely come somewhere about here. Stock carriers over here. Here's the new Ford e-locker. I did extend the wiring here because I plan to do a little loop so that I can put an inline connector in it because I'm not gonna be able to use the factory connector. Put some heat shrink on it to form it out of the way of the carrier cap bolts. And then the factory 11 and newer carrier does not have a provision for the ring gear because they use uh, individual wheel speed sensors. So I took and made my own, made sure it was ground down smooth and that none of the edges stuck up above it so that the ring gear sits flush. And this is actually a little deeper so that there's room for the tone ring to move in order to be square to everything. The next day, installed new Rebestos e-brake cables because mine were getting to where they would stick a little bit. New Timken bearings, drove the races for the pinion in, drilled and tapped the housing for a cable gland there. Here's another angle of that cable gland. It misses everything, comes out nicely, and I'll be able to right, route the cables so that they're not interfering with anything, and I'll make it as serviceable as I can. Here's what the cable gland looks like. Nothing particularly fancy, just drilled and tapped hole. All right, all bearings are pressed on. Ring gear is torqued. Getting ready to go back in here soon. I already set the rotational torque of the pinion at 25 inch pounds, which is right inside the spec at 25 to 30. And so I was happy with the way it felt, happy with the way it crushed. Everybody looked great, so called it good there. I then put the carrier in with the stock shims that this axle came with, and I had 18 thousandths of backlash, and it was very tight to the case. Didn't like it, so I popped those uh, large shims on either side, one here, one over here, and put the ones that this carrier came in from the 2011 axle. That put my backlash right at seven thousandths and gave a spot on pattern. Everybody worked perfect and there was good case preload, so I was super happy with that. Also, when I was swapping axles to get 355 ratios and a solid front axle, I drilled and tapped both front and rear housings for quarter inch national pipe plugs so that I could have a drain plug. That way I can get all of the gunk that sits in that little valley there cleaned out and it made for an easier drain before you pop the cover off so you don't wear all the fluid out of it. As I'm sliding the axle shafts in, I'm gonna make sure and loop my O-ring here so that it doesn't cut on the way in. And then I'm going to use my finger to fill this up with at least a little bit of gear lube so that the bearings do not start dry. Even though there's some oil in them, I'm still gonna try and hedge my bets to make sure that they have plenty of oil until the ring gear over there can fling up enough oil to work down the axle tubes to get in here. 
used a piece of heat shrink to make sure that sealed up nicely to it. And that's all threaded into here. Kept away from everybody, all the moving parts and all that. Pretty happy with the outcome. My original plan was to use an AN hose clamp and an inset switch or a handlebar switch mounted to the four wheel drive shifter so that it would still be accessible to the driver, but it also wouldn't get pushed accidentally, especially in town on pavement. This is the cable gland that I used since I was unable to use the factory pass through due to clearance issues between the housing and the ring gear. It had put the wires too close to the bolts, might have rubbed through them. So I utilized an aftermarket cable gland, bought a tap for it, drilled and tapped the hole, sealed it all up. I also bought a Timken Master install kit to rebearing the rear end while I was in there. I went with a used rear axle because my goal with this was to try and do it as cheaply as I possibly could. My hope was to be able to do a rear e-locker and a rebearing kit for the same price as a new Ford e-locker, which is still very cheap at about $570.